King Fernando, seated in a wheelchair, is accompanied by his wife, Esmeralda, and their child, Alfonso, along with guards and maids as they proceed to the balcony of their mansion overlooking a garden where a pregnant woman is about to be executed. His wife expresses concern for his well-being as he rises from his wheelchair to wave at the massive crowd below. Mendoza, his guard, wielding a red stick, assures the king that he will feel better once the execution is carried out. Alfonso gazes at the witch, who shifts slightly, frightening him. He quickly hides behind his mother as the king orders them to return to their rooms. As the prosecutor ignites the flames around the witch, the crowd erupts in cheers blaming her for the latest epidemic. Amidst the burning flames, the witch, Anna, who hasn't let out a single cry raises her head, and the air is filled with a baby's cries. Surrounded by a protective green shield, the baby struggles within the flames. Suddenly, the king and his guards, taken aback, turn to witness a knight clad in armor, wielding two swords and donning a wolf's helmet. With a growl, he charges forward, his green cape billowing behind him as he leaps over the guards attempting to impede his path. Despite Mendoza's efforts to intervene, the knight swiftly knocks him aside, leaping off the balcony and racing towards the witch. Bounding into the flames, he scoops up the baby, covering him with a cloth. His horse, clad in knight's armor, approaches, and he mounts it with the baby in his arms. Running through the crowd, he leaps onto rooftops, disappearing from sight. Mendoza recognizes him as a demon knight previously imprisoned. He orders his guards to pursue him and muses that he won't escape with a child. Gazing down at the witch engulfed in flames, the guard curses her, vowing to eradicate every last one of them. Despite the king's army being dispatched immediately, both the demon and the child vanish without a trace. Later, under Mendoza's advice, King Fernando implements widespread witch hunts throughout the land. Over a hundred witches and warlocks are tortured and executed in a single year. In the name of witch hunting, Valiant sends armies to surrounding cities, further consolidating and increasing their power. Elsewhere, seated on the edge of the bed, a woman with long red hair takes a sip from her goblet as her partner, German, recounts the events of the kingdom, Leiden, falling under Valiant's rule a year ago. With that, he concludes the tale from 17 years ago, leaving her disappointed with the lack of resolution regarding the vanished child. Taking a swig from his bottle, German admits they're still missing. As she attempts to rise, he pulls her back onto the bed, planting kisses along her neck. He asks her to look at the story from Anna's perspective but she dismisses this, condemning witches as nothing but disgusting creatures who make deals with devils. German however tells her that witches are people whose duty is to seal away demons. She laughs at the notion, dismissing it by stating that they aren't priests. However, he counters, explaining that witches are better than priests, because priests are weak and they lack the strength needed to seal the demons. The lady puts up another question, stating that, didn't the king's health recover after they executed the witch? And German replies it may be just a coincidence, or maybe, it has been set up that way by a demon, or someone who has sided with the demons. She takes another sip of alcohol, confessing that she is a hoe for the streets, and has slept with many men but has never encountered a single demon outside of bed. He pins her and tells her that he will show her one, and her eyes glisten for a second, but she pushes him away saying that he has to pay for it first. Just then, there's a knock at the door, and someone informs German that his son has arrived to collect him. German behaving like a pathetic broke-ass father with no money, and no Riz asks his son to lend him some money through the window. The son responds by picking up a rock and hurling it at him before walking away. Observing the son, the girl remarks that he appears to be around the same age as the witch's missing son. At the same time, in the dead of night, a man awakens and makes his way through the hallway to the room of the red-haired girl, who emanates a peculiar aura. Having a weird sense of taste from watching too many genres of hentai he doesn't falter. As he approaches her with lustful intent, a purple creature strikes from above, engulfing him whole, while the girl licks her lips, a wicked grin spreading across her face. In the castle, Mendoza wields a quill, jotting down notes on a piece of paper while Octavia, holding a candle, stands nearby. He mentions a report detailing a father and son engaging in peculiar exercises near the outskirts of Leighton. Octavia speculates whether the son is the offspring of Anna, the one who escaped 17 years ago, suggesting they bury him if the reports prove true. Mendoza assures her that he has already taken action. The red-haired lady asks German if he has ever encountered a demon who confirms, describing them as creatures closer to wild animals who take their prey's form after consuming them. 
He mentions the disappearance of many customers from her workplace, but she brushes it off blaming it on marital issues. The woman seduces German, but as he leans in for a kiss, she undergoes a sudden transformation. Emanating purple energy from her eyes and mouth as a horror materializes behind him. He swiftly retrieves his dual swords and plunges them into the horror, causing the woman to vanish with a scream. He pins the horror to the wall with his sword and the horror recognizes him as the knight who once escaped with the child, German Lewis, also known as the Makai Knight Zorro. As guards encircle the area, raining flaming arrows upon the boy's house, a man with white hair bursts in, wielding a sword and locking eyes with the boy amidst the flames. He questions if the boy is Anna's child, to which the boy introduces himself as Leon Lewis, inheritor of the bloodline that seals away horrors. With a swift motion, he raises his sword, summoning a circle above him, which manifests as golden armor adorning his form. As the golden knight, Garrow, he clashes swords with the man outside the burning house. Garrow utilizes his cape to grab the man and hurl him away as he transforms into a horror. Seizing the burning house, the horror launches it toward Garrow, who maneuvers through its windows, emerging on the other side to pierce the horror's eye, causing it to collapse with a pained groan. The guards flee from the castle as the horror crashes before them, but it rises once more, charging at Garo. Swiftly, Garo slashes its legs, causing the horror to burst into pieces. Later, Leon confronts his father, German, for leaving him alone at home, knowing he would be attacked. But German justifies it as the final part of his training. With that, together, they ride towards Valiant, the land where Anna was killed. Meanwhile, in the castle, the kingdom celebrates Prince Alfonso's 20th birthday. As the king and queen bless him, he vows to protect his people. His mother gifts him a protective necklace she's worn since childhood. Octavia's eyes widen as she recognizes the necklace and rushes to the room where Mendoza prepares their ultimate weapon. Elsewhere, in a dimly lit room, a man stands over a bound woman seated in a chair, claiming to be a priest and reassuring her that he knows she's not a witch. Ignoring her pleas, he stabs her, causing her to cry out in agony as her blood trickles into the drain. Opening the gate of Makai, he unleashes a curse upon humanity, infecting them with desires, sins, and illnesses. A massive portal emerges between him and a chain device, and he eagerly consumes the dark energy pouring from it. The man, now a horror, turns around and consumes the girl as well. These creatures, horrors, have existed since ancient time, and to save humanity from these horror, they are hunted down by men donned in armor called as the Makai Knights. Knight Zorro, also known as German, strides into a hallway where he finds a woman reclining on a large couch, whom he refers to as the Dog of the Watchdog Center. He remarks on her youthful appearance but declines her offer to talk in her real form. She mentions how it is the first time that the number of knights has been so low since she has been assigned in that place. She laments the tragedy of the valiant witch hunting, but pointing his sword at her, German demands her to drop the act. He accuses her of issuing the orders, but she denies it and tells him that it was Mendoza, where he was able to shut down the watchdog center's communication and sending out false orders. And he was able to do so, because he is a Makai priest who once was strongly supported by the council. At the same time, Octavia informs Mendoza about the necklace given to Alfonso by the Queen. His disbelief turns to horror as he realizes the implication of the Makai Knight's bloodline. Octavia attempts to comfort him, but he pushes her away, his face marked with dark symbols, muttering about the necessity of eradicating their bloodline. German questions what did they do to Mendoza, that he has such a deep-seated hatred towards the Makai Knights, and also inquires if he can control the horrors. The woman shrugs indifferently, urging German to eliminate any perceived threats, even if it means targeting Mendoza. Leon sleeping on the riverbed dreams of his mother as fire marks appear on his hand. German appears through a portal throws him into the river, and the marks vanish. During their journey, German mocking Leon tells him mogging and making a depressed face won't get him any bitches. But, Leon acting like a Sigma male says that he doesn't need them and punches him on the face. Elsewhere, Prince Alfonso impresses his teacher during a practice duel with a knight, showcasing his skills. But suddenly, a servant accidentally damages a stone bearing the king's emblem and faces punishment until the prince intervenes, saving him. Queen Esmeralda, observing from the window, praises him and is glad to have such a kind child like him. Just then, she notices the king sweating profusely and orders Octavia to fetch the king's medicine. As she's about to give it to him, Mendoza arrives with guards, accusing the queen of poisoning the medicine to help Alfonso claim the throne. 
The queen denies it, but Mendoza questions if Alfonso is really the king's child, because her vertical lips might have been wet by a different stick other than the king. Angry, the queen refuses to accept the accusation, but Mendoza grins and motions his guards to arrest her. At the same time, German shows Leon the money he got from selling the horses, explaining that riding them would attract too much attention. A woman affectionately embraces German, showering him with kisses. German reveals to Leon that he has inherited Garo's armor from his mother, and only he can summon and use the armor. But now the problem is, Leon won't be inheriting his armor, so he needs someone to inherit his armor as well. Therefore, he is trying to make plot with other girls, so that he can get another child to inherit his armor. Hearing this, Leon curses him for being unfaithful to his mother while German runs away with his lady. Leon walks through the streets wondering how his mother fell in love with German and spots the stake where the witches are burned. A peculiar figure with a disfigured face informs him that the townsfolk are suspecting witches to be behind the recent disappearances of young girls. He also mentions that recently they were able to capture an outsider woman suspected to be a witch before vanishing. Meanwhile, in a nearby chamber, the horror pretending to be a priest confronts a woman named Emma, accused of witchcraft, offering her a chance at a less painful death if she confesses, but she mockingly refuses him. Acting like a good man, the priest grants her a night to think it over, despite his underling's eagerness to torture her. After the priest leaves, they strike her, but she bites one of them, reminding them of the priest's decision to spare her for the night. Perched atop the tower, Leon ponders whether the disappearance of the girls could be a horror's doing. German agrees and he also speculates that Emma might be a Makai priest and suggests they rescue her. Confused about why she was captured if she's a priest, Leon is reminded by German that if they were up against humans they aren't allowed to harm them. In the dead of night, the priest enters the room and reveals his desire to torture Emma by inserting his tiny needles into every inch of her body to find the place where witches don't feel pain. Emma dismisses it as a rumor and reveals a pink bell hidden on her left leg, causing the priest's eyes to turn pink momentarily before returning to normal. Realizing he's a horror, Emma questions him about someone named Luciano, but he denies any knowledge. Recognizing her as a Makai priest, the priest transforms into a horror. Suddenly, the door bursts open, and German rushes in, commanding Leon to handle the horror. Leon jumps and kicks him out of the room breaking the wall. German moves to assist Emma, but Emma acting like a girl boss who doesn't need rescuing, uses a thread to unleash blue magic on the ground, temporarily blinding him as she chases after the horror. Emma attacks the horror engaged in combat with Leon, reprimanding him for interfering and getting in her way, which annoys him. With both Emma and Leon on either side, the horror transforms into a box and launches an attack against them. Leon leaps onto a nearby bridge, but the horror cuts it with its scythe-like arms. As the bridge collapses, Leon lands on the stake, triggering memories of his mother's burning. Fire marks appear, and he transforms into Golden Knight Garo, writhing in agony, which surprises Emma to know that Leon is the bearer of the Golden Knight armor. The horror pins him to the wall with its chain-like arms, but he manages to send fire through them, burning the chains and sending Emma flying in the process. Seeing that Leon is out of control, German transforms into Knight Zoro and intervenes, tackling Garo to calm him down. Knowing that it's too weak against them, the horror attempts to flee into the sky, but Emma uses her threads to leap after it, cutting it into pieces while Garo struggles in pain. As Emma delivers the final blow, Zoro stabs Garo's armor, causing him to revert to his human form and collapse unconscious. Emma expresses her disdain for Makai knights, labeling them as the worst, before walking away. At the same time, Gracia informs Alfonso about his mother's situation who mounts his horse and races after the carriage carrying his mother. His mother tells him to flee as she tells him about Mendoza's betrayal. The queen encourages him to come back and reclaim the kingdom someday like the legendary Knight of Light. With guards in pursuit, Alfonso swiftly deals with them before escaping. Meanwhile, Mendoza, burning Zoro Knight's picture, vows to eradicate them all. Leon and German sit in a bar, where German reveals a message from the Watchdog Center. Igniting a red envelope in green flame, words materialize mid-air, forming a message about the Madu Ring, Zaruba, which is a horror that has no enmity towards people sealed within it, and grants power and light the way to their destiny to whomever it forms a contract with. The message tells them that Zaruba is almost complete and they need to inherit it before the inventor dies. German tells Leon that they should get going to claim the Zaruba, and he knows that it is located somewhere between a place named Arjala and Rocks. Leon is reluctant, but German reminds him that he needs the Madu Ring to complete his transformation into a Golden Knight, and to keep it under control. Overhearing their conversation, Emma, 
who is staying at the same inn, surprises them by joining their table. She teases Leon, referring to him as a kid, but German welcomes her to join them for a drink. As they sit, Emma inquires about Leon's progress in controlling his flames and German mentions his request to Priest Gale to repair the Madu Ring, surprising her, as they had connection with the highest-ranking priest in the district. Emma remarks how it will make him a full-fledged golden knight, prompting Leon to point at his dad and ask why he is sharing this information with a suspicious woman like her. Emma notices the mark on Leon's hand and touches it, causing him to flinch as he gets up to head to bed, to shake his stick as a woman finally touch him. Emma, softening her gaze, grabs his coat and tells him she hopes she didn't defend him by touching the mark. Leon leaves without answering, and Emma, thanking German for the drink, heads to bed too, killing German's hope to make plot. The next day, German and Leon set off to claim Zaruba, heading towards an underground cave where Priest Gale and his apprentice Marcelo are working. Gale, who is working diligently on repairing the Zaruba, knows that he is an old man and must last until Roberto arrives. Therefore he decides to go to rest, ordering Marcelo to clean up the rest. Marcelo hears an alarm going off and rushes outside. As German and Leon hurry through the forest towards the secret cave, they come under attack by needles conjured when Marcelo drums a magical drum. German calls out to Priest Gale, naming himself Roberto, and Marcelo stops the attack immediately. Priest Gale scolds Marcelo for failing to distinguish between a horror and a knight. And with that, Marcelo runs off into the cave. Gale asks German if his name is German or Roberto. German responds that he's fine with either and jests about both of their kids are having mommy issues, growing up with only a father figure. In a flashback, Gale sits in the cave, expressing concern about the valiant witch hunt leading to horrors spreading across the land. German shows him a broken Madu ring, an heirloom inherited by Anna, Leon's mother, along with her golden knight armor. German asks Gale to repair it before Leon who is just a newborn at the time, to takes up the sword when he grows up. Gale accepts it as his last job and stating that it will take a very long time to finish. Back in the present, Gale assures Leon that Zaruba will guide his flames onto the correct path. He also remarks that Leon's eyes resemble those of the previous Garrel, his grandfather, who was the mightiest knight in the land. With determination, Gale rises, vowing to utilize all his power to complete the final repairs of the Madu Ring. Marcelo, being a pathetic delusional guy, sits in a dimly lit corner, wondering why Leon has come after all this time to claim what he believes is rightfully his, the Madu Ring. Meanwhile, Gale faces the Zaruba with Marcelo standing behind them. Beginning a chant, Gale tosses white rice at the Zaruba to complete the process, eventually throwing the entire bowl at it, which eventually led the Zaruba to extend crystalline formations from itself. Marcelo, filled with excitement, watches, but then an inner voice tempts him and questions whether it's right to allow Leon and the others to take the Zaruba. Just then, he transforms into a Makai knight behind Gale, stabbing him with a sword, declaring he won't let anyone take his Zaruba. As Marcelo, now armored, stands gasping, a dark aura emerges from somewhere behind him. With that, Marcelo flees into the forest, but he ends up encountering Emma. Questioning her identity, Marcelo discovers she's a Makai priest. When he spots the radar in her hands, he draws his sword, but Emma swiftly binds him with her string. Suddenly, a loud blast draws Leon and German toward them. As they reach us there, Marcelo informs them that the Madu Ring was stolen by a Makai priest who wields string, and that she also killed Priest Gale. Recognizing it as Emma's ability, Leon rushes to find her. Emma sits injured in the forest, her hand wounded. Leon appears, calling out to her, but she hides. Thinking he's gone, she sighs, but Leon suddenly reappears and attacks her, which she easily deflects. He demands the Madu Ring, but she informs him that Marcelo has turned into a horror and still possesses the Zaruba. Meanwhile, German kneels over Gale, assessing the situation. Marcelo expresses his intention to leave and find the Madu Ring, but German notices that the wound doesn't match that of a string wielder. As Leon rushes toward them, he encounters German fleeing from Marcelo's power. Marcelo tries to use the Madu Ring's power, but it fails, as German explains that only Golden Knights can wield it effectively. Unable to accept this, Marcelo transforms into a horror. Seeing this, Leon relies on his father if he loses control again and transforms into Garo. He charges at Marcelo, who retaliates with his power, causing their swords to clash amidst purple flames and fire marks appearing on Garo. Emma attacks from the trees and both combatants are thrown backward. The crystal on Marcelo's stomach cracks, revealing the Madu Ring, and Garo seizes the opportunity to grab it. 
The moment he touched the ring, Leon finds himself in a dark space with Saruba's face hovering mid-air, asking if he's ready to make a contract. Leon agrees, and a red ring tattoo appears on his finger. Saruba clarifies that he's Leon's partner, not his servant, and in exchange for power, Leon must offer his life every new moon. As Garo withdraws his hand from Marcelo's stomach, the Zaruba symbol is now engraved on his hand. He delivers the final blow to Marcelo, who disappears. Later, Emma casts a spell to protect Gale's mementos from being disturbed. Leon questions if she followed them to target Zaruba, but she laughs, stating she'll wait until he's fully fledged. As Emma departs, Leon finally realizes she placed a tracking device on him earlier, and that's how she tracked them. At the same time, guards chase Alfonso, accusing him of attempting to assassinate the king. Alfonso defends himself, stabbing a guard who then transforms into a horror, which completely surprises him. Enraged by these creatures threatening his country, Alfonso fights back, but his sword shatters, and the horrors overpower him easily, until a Makai knight in red armor arrives, attacking and killing all the horrors surrounding Alfonso. Alfonso asks the knight if he is the legendary hero of Valiant, the Knight of Light. The knight transforms into human form and turns away without answering. He asks Alfonso if he is joining and Alfonso hurries up to follow him. As Leon and German stroll in the forest, Leon questions where they are heading off. German reveals that he heard strange rumors about a town where they stayed the night. Understanding their duty as Makai knights to eradicate horrors, Leon agrees to investigate. Upon entering the town, they notice the peculiar behavior of its inhabitants, with pig heads scattered openly on the streets. German approaches a young lady drawing water from a well, but she unexpectedly transforms into an old, unsightly woman. They are then confronted by the village chief, a bald man with a white mustache, accompanied by two bodyguards. German questions him about the disappearances in the village, including that of a monk and a church official, but the chief denies any knowledge of such events. He urges them to leave, claiming that the villagers fear outsiders like them, because they will bring them misfortune. Later, Leon attempts to persuade German to depart from the town, but German advises Leon not to rush into seeking revenge for his mother, because he knows he wants to reach the town where his mother was killed as fast as possible. He further states that revenge isn't healthy because it will only destroy him. Besides, if he really wants to get destroyed, then let a weak woman do it for him. Just then, three children bullies a boy named Alois, demanding he leave their territory. When they try to take a toy he's holding, they end up getting hurt instead. Just as one of them is about to strike him, German intervenes. The children explain that they want them to leave because the village is cursed by Alois's mother, who is believed to be a witch before running off. Alois praises his toy for biting the bully, and German offers to escort him home. As they enter Alois's home, a beautiful woman carrying a laundry bucket warmly greets them. She asks if Alois properly thanked them for saving him, but he quickly runs back to his room. As they settle in, Orelia, Alois's mother, expresses gratitude and shares her concerns about Alois's behavior since his father's passing. She mentions his attachment to a peculiar toy doll found in the woods. She inquires if they are visiting the village on a pilgrimage, but German mentions the rumors of the village being cursed using a bell to detect if she's a horror. Orelia thinking they are witch hunters tells them that she won't curse them. German makes a pathetic disgraceful attempt at flirting, by telling her that he won't mind any curse she places on him. But, Orelia laughs it off as a joke identifying him like the clown he is. She laughs off his jest and offers them a place to stay, which German gladly accepts. At the same time, Alois secretly escapes from his home and escorts the three bullies to follow him into the forest after he claims that a band of thieves hid their treasures there. However, he leads them to the avoided ghost swamp. Suddenly, Alois's demeanor becomes robotic and rigid, and he turns around, frightening the other children as the world around them blacks out. German inquires why the villagers suspect Orelia of being a witch. She explains that she moved to the village with her husband and after his husband's passing, strange occurrences have happened. When Leon asks about the disappearances, Orelia reveals that people vanish without a trace. German asks her if her husband disappeared too but she tells them that he was attacked by thieves on the way to the capital. Then, he further inquires why everyone thinks she is a witch and all the misfortune is caused by her. Orelia simply answer that it can't be helped because the villagers needed someone to pin the blame on and she was the perfect target. Hearing all this, Leon wonders why the chief lied and German thinks that it must be because there is something he doesn't want outsiders to know. Suddenly, the parents of the missing children burst in, armed and demanding answers. 
German attempts to defuse the situation, but the chief accuses them of being associates of the alleged witch. One woman claims to have seen Alois with the missing children, but German defends him, stating he's been inside the entire time. And it turns out that it was a horror, disguised as Alois that led the children into the forest. As the villagers take Orelia for interrogation, Alois flees when they try to capture him as well. The chief, surrounded by villagers, interrogates Orelia, who is bound to a pillar with a bag over her head. Threatening her with an axe, he demands to know if she revealed information about the ceremony to German and Leon. Suddenly, chaos erupts as a villager bursts in, announcing that the chief's house is ablaze. Blaming it on the curse, the villagers gather outside his house. German standing atop a house nearby rings a bell to identify any horror, and then rushes to cut Orelia's ropes. The villagers enter the room, demanding to know German's intentions regarding the witch. The chief interjects, inquiring about Leon's whereabouts, to which German simply answers he don't know. With that, the chief announces that all suspicions against Orelia have been cleared, permitting them to leave. As they walk away, the chief tells the villagers that the ceremony will take place that night. Leon approaches a house and overhears a conversation inside. He accidentally makes a noise and the conversation abruptly stops. Upon entering, he discovers the house deserted, except for three broken dolls on a table. Venturing further, he enters a room filled with dolls, which completely creeps him out. He turns to find Alois standing behind him. Alois inquires about his mother, and Leon reassures him that his father will take action to rescue her. Observing his doll, Alois agrees to let Leon escort him home. As they walk back, Alois explains to Leon that villagers avoid that house near the swamp, believing it's cursed because of a woodcutter dubbed the town demon before his mom. Leon asks him what he was doing at such a place, but Alois ignoring his question, asks him his purpose in the village. Leon confides that he's there to eradicate the entities plaguing the village. Alois assumes he means the thieves responsible for his father's death, but Leon clarifies that apprehending criminals isn't his mission. As they approach the house, German informs Leon that there are no horrors among the villagers. He tells them that the only possibility left is Alois. He volunteers to take care of it as he thinks Leon won't be able to kill a child but Leon tells him not to treat him like a kid. They test Alois by ringing the bell but find out that he's human as well. German considers that an outsider might be involved when Leon asks Orelia about the woodcutter. She explains that in the small hut near the swamp, a woodcutter used to live there, but he was killed by the villagers claiming to perform a ceremony to stop the misfortune of the village. Leon suddenly realizes something and rushes into Alois's room, but finds it empty. He tells German that the doll is the horror and rushes out. The villagers surround their house, each holding a fire torch, ready to perform the ceremony. Leon chases after Alois, who is being misled by the horror, claiming that German and Leon are bad people and they want to separate them. Leon catches up to them and demands to see the doll, which then transforms into a horror. Leon transforms into Garrow and prepares to strike the horror, but it suddenly takes on Alois's face. Garrow hesitates, and the horror seizes the opportunity to flee. Despite Garrow's attempt to chase it, Alois intervenes, shielding the horror. Then, Alois finally reveals the truth that it was the villagers that killed his father, expressing his desire for revenge. At the same time, the villagers attempt to break down their house, Orelia, crying on the floor, admits that her husband was involved in the ceremony to kill the woodcutter. But after some time he couldn't stand it anymore and he tried to go and report it to the church, but the villagers killed him in the forest, and Alois was able to witness all this event which completely broke him. The villagers axe down the walls of the house, but suddenly the horror appears and attacks and devours all of them. German, grabbing Orelia, escapes through the window. The horror watches as the chief flees, but Garrow intervenes, using his cloak to restrain the horror. As he is about to stab him again, the horror transforms his face again, but this time Garrow finishes him off. Alois cries hitting Leon because the horror was the only one that helped him to get his revenge. His mother hugs him apologizing for not being able to do anything. The next day, Alois and Orelia place a blue flower on a grave as they depart from the village. Watching the villagers take the chief, bound and tied, to a room, Leon feels angry but German reminds him that it's not their role to pass judgment on humans. Elsewhere, as Alfonso battles horrors alongside the Mackay Knight, he seeks to understand what these creatures are and their motives. The Knight explains that they are horrors, creatures from the demon world, where they live in darkness and consumes humans. He reveals that Mendoza wields a forbidden Madu tool to command the horrors, aiming to seize control of Valiant. Hearing this, Alfonso expresses his desire to learn the knight's skills to aid in defeating the horrors and reclaiming his kingdom, because right now he is too weak. 
The knight swings his sword killing the horror behind him and then introduces himself as Raphael Bandras, a friend of the late Golden Knight. The next day, German having a lewd dream is kicked awake by Leon. Stepping out into the sunlight, his ring suddenly glows, transporting him to a realm with Zaruba. There, Zaruba informs him that it is a new moon, the time when he must receive Leon's life as per their contract. As Zaruba begins to extract Leon's life force, Leon collapses as German runs toward him. German sits beside Leon, who lies unconscious in bed with his ring glowing and pulsating. He remembers that there's one night a month when the Golden Knight doesn't appear when he gives his life to Zaruba. With a sigh, he wished that he had asked Anna for more details. Alfonso follows Raphael into a place in ruins where a golden portrait of a Makai Knight hangs. Raphael tells Alfonso about the forgotten knowledge of horrors in the Makai Knights and priests who once battled them. He tells him how this knowledge has faded from memory, with Makai Knights now unjustly labeled as witches and persecuted. He further informs him that hundreds of his comrades have died in his country in vain and did not fight back because they are not allowed to harm humans. Hearing all this, Alfonso finally realizes the truth about the witch hunt, and it was Mendoza who was behind all this. Raphael confirms that Mendoza hates all knights who fight horrors and their descendants, not knowing the reason why. He further reveals that the blood of the legendary Golden Knight, Garrow, also known as the Knight of Light, flows in Alfonso's veins as well, which completely surprises Alfonso. Raphael reveals to Alfonso the tragic story of Anna, who carried the blood of the Golden Knight but was executed for cursing the King of Valiant. In her final moments, she passed down her bloodline, giving birth to a son. While Alfonso already knew parts of this story, Raphael adds that Anna had a younger sister and her name is Esmeralda who somehow by fate became the Queen of Valiant and was also Alfonso's mother. Anna's duty was to pass down the golden armor through her bloodline, while Esmeralda, adopted by aristocrats, remained unaware of her heritage. Only her father and Raphael knew the truth. Alfonso recalls his mother's necklace, worn since birth and realizes that Mendoza must have noticed it, leading to his betrayal, because that necklace is the key to activate the Makai Knight armor. Alfonso questions Raphael about his strength, asking him if he really has the power of the Makai Knight to fight against horrors, which prompts Raphael to attack him. Alfonso manages to deflect his attacks at the beginning but loses ground and falls, but immediately gets back up. Raphael explains that his bloodline alone isn't sufficient, and in his current state, he cannot even don the armor. Undeterred, Alfonso tells him that even if he does not get the armor, he will do whatever it takes to protect his country. Hearing this, Raphael offers him his sword, but Alfonso struggles under its weight. Despite this setback, Alfonso follows Raphael as he leaves, determined to find a way to fulfill his destiny. Octavia having a sugar daddy king, caresses the king's head staring at him creepily. Mendoza enters the room and asks about the king's health telling her to keep the king alive. He questions about the queen and Octavia tells him that Esmeralda doesn't know about her bloodline. Mendoza suggests that they can kill the queen anytime, so she could be a valuable asset in their pursuit of the fleeing prince, and he orders Octavia to keep her imprisoned. Elsewhere, Raphael uses a forged document to enter a land. As they were walking, he reveals to Alfonso that despite being skilled in battle, his grandfather, the Golden Knight, was naive in worldly affairs. So it was Raphael that arranged the adoption of his daughter, Alfonso's mother. Even though he did all that, he was surprised to learn that she became the queen. As they make their way to Count Romero of Valdona, Raphael advises Alfonso to pay close attention. Upon arrival, Alfonso attempts to question the civilians, but they flee immediately in fear upon seeing him. As they reach the place, Raphael tells him about Count Romero that he was known as a man of integrity, but now he is no longer a human. As they enter the Count's domain, a knight trails closely behind them, hovering in mid-air. The knight attacks Alfonso, but Raphael intervenes, breaking his sword. He rings a bell and the knight's eyes turn red as he transforms into a horror. Raphael urges Alfonso to stay back while he engages the horror in combat. Just then, one of its arms strikes Alfonso and he crashes into another room where a creepy man with red eyes plays an instrument. A green gigantic horror with multiple hands appears from a corner and approaches a woman holding a baby. Alfonso runs and stabs him but the horror barely notices. Alfonso grabbing the woman pulls them from the corner shielding them from the horror. As he grabs another weapon he hits the horror multiple times calling him a monster. But it did no damage and the horror sends Alfonso flying with a flick of its hand. But he quickly gets back on his feet and grabs a wooden stick to attack it again.
However, Raphael suddenly appears transforming into the stronghold knight, Gaia. Sweeping his sword on the ground, he conjures green flame and stabs the horror with it causing it to disappear. Alfonso approaches the shivering, sobbing woman and apologizes repeatedly for his uselessness. Outside, he asks Raphael to teach him how to fight against horror, and he is willing to overcome any hurdle to gain that strength so that he can protect his country. Hearing his conviction, Raphael finally agrees to teach him all his skills. Elsewhere, Leon finds himself standing in a strange light, unsure of his surroundings, when suddenly a golden knight materializes behind him, whom he recognized as his grandfather. The knight explains that every new moon, a day of Leon's life is consumed by Zaruba, and they are in a realm where time stands still, separate from the usual flow of time. He further tells Leon not to fear his flames, and to seek guidance from his blade whenever he is uncertain about who he must protect. Hearing all this, Leon finally wakes up to find himself resting in the lap of a woman, and he was about to shake his stick again but couldn't, as it was daytime. His father informs him that these kind people offered them a ride to Santa Bard. As Leon rises, he notices several other passengers in the vehicle. He begins to tell German about his grandfather but hesitates, leaving him curious. As the blacksmiths diligently work on shaping a new blade, soldiers from the Bard castles arrive at their workshop, bearing a sword covered in red cloth. Jordi, the boss assumes that his son, Sergi, has returned but the soldiers unveil his sword, revealing a weapon with a red mark on its hilt. German and Leon make their way into Valiant, with Leon eager to head straight to the castle. However, German, ever the charmer, suggests they check out the local women first. Meanwhile, Julio, a worker at the blacksmith's shop, bids farewell to his colleagues and enters the workshop to find Jordi fixated on the sword brought back by the soldiers. As Julio closes the door, Jordi hears the sword speak in his son Serga's voice, calling out to him. Moving closer, he is enveloped by a dark aura emanating from the sword, which enters his body through his eyes and mouth. German approaches Julio and inquires about the castle. Just then, Jordi steps out of the shop and assumes German's interest lies in becoming a knight, mistaking his intentions. As he takes him for a chat, Julio, concerned, asks him if he feels better. Jordi tells him that he feels much better now and walks away. Leon explores the bustling market, noticing the unusual presence of soldiers. He overhears discussions about the possibility of war due to neighboring kingdoms gaining power. Just then, a woman offers him a slice of cheese to taste, and he glances at a young woman working in her shop. The woman misunderstanding his intentions asks him if he wants to make plot with her, making him uncomfortable. But luckily, Emma appears, pretending to be his partner, she pulls him away. After they are out of sight, Leon pulls his hand away telling her she didn't need her help. Emma immediately tells him sorry, and asks him if he was planning on sleeping with them. Leon tries to act like a Sigma male with no interest in them, but Emma recognizes him for the virgin he is and laughs at him. Angry, Leon asks her what she wants from him. She asks him if he has any information on horrors and advises him to grow up because unnecessary anger won't do him any good. At the same time, German joins Jordi for a drink, and the bar owner offers it on the house upon seeing Jordi. German comments on Jordi's popularity, and the bar owner mentions that besides being a skilled blacksmith, Jordi also served on the municipal council in the past. Curious about the knighthood he mentioned earlier, German inquires further. Jordi explains that the head of the army passed away recently, replaced by a knight dubbed as the Black Knight for creating a feared and powerful knighthood in their kingdom. In order to strengthen the new system, this new leader recruits his new soldiers by assembling strong and able people from all corners of the kingdom, making them fight to the death, and only the remaining few survivors are selected as his soldier. Jordi mentions with pride that his son, Sergi, is part of this squadron before abruptly leaving due to a headache. At night, Jordi confronts two soldiers from the squadron, demanding to know his son's whereabouts. Frustrated by their lack of recognition of his son, he transforms into a horror and attacks, killing them both. The next day, a merchant strikes a kid for stealing his food. Julio intervenes, urging the merchant to let him go, but the shopkeeper demands compensation from him for the theft. Leon arrives on the scene and pays for the stolen items, allowing the child to flee. Walking together, Julio shares his past with Leon, revealing how he was once in a similar situation to the child, homeless, until Jordi took him in and taught him the craft of blacksmithing. As they round a corner, Leon runs into his father knocking on Jordi's door. As they sit down for their meal at Jordi's place, Leon and German start bickering with each other. Germans remark about Leon being a smart mouth, which annoys him, and Leon suggests that he should act more like a father. Jordi tries to lighten the mood but German continues to argue with Leon. 
German's words about being better off without a son like Leon push Jordy to his limit, and he angrily tells both of them to leave his house. Regretting his outburst, he tells them to forgive him and to enjoy their meal and he leaves. Even though he apologized, the two decides to leave because they were acting too freely on their kindness. As they walk through the streets, Julio approaches, apologizing for Jordy's behavior. Julio asks German if he heard about the soldiers from the boss, and he replies yes telling him about Jordy's son, who is currently stationed there. Hearing this, Julio finally reveals the truth that his son is no longer with them, because he died during the knighthood's test, and only his sword returned. He explains how his boss has been acting differently since then, even sending his workers to other shops, and he looks at him as if he's possessed by something. Upon re-entering the house, German touches Serge's sword and tells them that the gate has been opened. Elsewhere, in his horror form, Jordy pins a soldier who claims his son is dead, telling him it's a lie and he consumes him. Julio runs up to him telling him to accept Sergei's death. Refusing to believe, Jordi strikes Julio, calling him a liar, but Leon intervenes, blocking the attack with his sword. German arrives, transforming into Zoro, and tells Leon to let him handle the fight. The horror forges his sword, sharpening it with an iron tool on his shoulder. Zoro engages in combat, evading the horror's attacks and launching chains to bind him. He pulls himself towards the horror and lands a powerful blow, then swiftly slashes the horror into pieces, causing it to disappear. After his death, Julio breaks down apologizing for his helplessness. German consoles him that people who remain should focus on determining their next steps rather than dwelling on past events. Observing the scene from above, Emma comments on German's occasional moments of seriousness. Picking the hammer, Julio wonders if he will be able to become a respected man like his boss. But Leon reminds him how Jordi taught him that he can achieve anything with his hands in Jordi's workplace. At the same time, Emma asks German about the soldier's test. He explains that they can enter the Black Knighthood by fighting each other. She adds that the winner is required to enter a specific underground room before being knighted, where screams have been heard by a castle servant passing by, pleading for something not to enter his body. Emma further tells him that winning or losing in the test doesn't matter because the outcome remains the same. In the underground room, six soldiers are tied together in the center as horrors circle them, emitting a dark aura that enters their mouths, transforming them into horrors as well. Mendoza observes, satisfied that the creation of his knights is progressing smoothly. The man called the Black Knight wielding a shield and sword informs him that one of his horrors has been slain by a Makai knight and a priest, and he immediately declares his intention to confront the both of them by himself. Elsewhere, German adjusts his hair holding a mirror with a pink ribbon. Leon looking at him wonders why he's wasting time when he remains as hideous as he always is, and presses for their plan to infiltrate the castle. German tells him to be patient and wait until he has obtained more information from the women he is gonna make plot tonight. Leon questions about the mirror, and German explains how women love getting gifts and how their services change with it. He advises Leon to remember this is his advice, which ends up in him getting kicked by Leon out of the room. At midnight, while Leon is asleep in his room, a woman tells her companion that Leon is Prince Alfonso in disguise, as she had heard about him traveling with a middle-aged man. Realizing the implications of Prince Alfonso's betrayal, they alert the knighthood, who storm the place and head toward Leon's room. They enter to find the room empty and Leon kicks them suddenly appearing as he runs from the soldiers chasing him. Emma observing from a roof wonders what he is doing as he runs away from a group of knighthoods, led by the Black Knight. He tells Leon that even though he isn't Prince Alfonso, killing a Makai knight will be just as satisfying and orders them to attack. As the knighthoods attack him, Leon unsheathes his sword, puzzled by the presence of horrors among the knights. Just then, all the knights transform into horrors themselves. Black Knight observes from afar, recognizing who Leon is by his stance, and the fact that he arrived with a middle-aged man. He jumps to attack him and tells Leon that killing him won't violate the code of Makai knights as he transforms into a knight, emanating a dark aura. As he strikes, Leon dodges and transforms into Garo, counterattacking. Black Knight expresses his disappointment at Garo, referring to him as a weakling unworthy of being a golden knight. Garo tries to flee, but he tackles him, causing him to revert to his human form. Just as the knight prepares for a finishing strike, Emma intervenes and pulls Leon away with her string. But the Black Knight shoots her string, and Leon falls to the ground. He attacks Emma as well and having no other choice, she flees. While he is unconscious, Leon dreams that he's restrained to a chair while a man pierces him to extract tainted blood. The man questions Leon about being a werewolf. Leon denies it, but suddenly finds himself transformed into one. 
Leon kills everyone in the house and then, realizing what he's done, rushes outside, unable to accept that he's become a werewolf. Just then, Leon awakens abruptly in a room, greeted by a little girl named Agatha who insists he is her brother, Pepe. Confusion clouds his mind as an old man enters, revealing Leon's amnesia may be due to an injury. He offers medication to aid his recovery. Agatha suggests that Leon was probably attacked by a werewolf, and the old man starts sharing a chilling old legends of werewolves disguised among humans, feeding on them during full moons. Suddenly, the distant sound of a flute signals the arrival of Harlequin explaining how he's there to escort them to the church. Agatha rushes outside, and urged by the old man, Leon follows Agatha as well. Outside the church, a man with peculiar eyes emerges, surrounded by eager children. With a gentle touch, he selects a few, who obediently follow him inside. After that, a sister appears and she inquires about Leon's identity to Agatha, who reveals his return as Pepe, stunning the sister. Masking her surprise with forced laughter, the sister urges Agatha to focus on her chores, so that she can enhance her chances of being chosen to go to Lograja. However, Agatha tells her that there's no need for her to leave now that Pepe has returned. As the sister retreats into the church and shuts the door, she gasps in disbelief at Pepe's return. In the evening, Agatha tells Leon how she knew he would return for her someday, and she immediately asks him if he wants to get married, which heavily excited the damn pedophile, Leon. Just then, a bell tolls and Agatha leaves to help the sister with her chores as they have given her lots of responsibility. Later, the sister encounters Leon and tries to avoid him, but he asks her about his identity. Confused, she asks if he's suffering from amnesia, and she is visibly pleased when he confirms it. Lying to him, she claims to have rescued him when he fled from home, arranging for the traveling entertainers to transport him to the exclusive almshouse reserved solely for Lograja's children. Pretending to be occupied with chores, she then excuses herself. Meanwhile, outside the church, Harlequin extends an invitation to Agatha to accompany him, but she declines, engrossed in her laundry tasks. But then, Harlequin removes his mask, revealing his true identity as Pepe, Agatha's older brother. As Leon re-enters the room where he initially awoke, he surveys the shelves, and he discovers his sword, triggering a rush of memories flooding back into his mind as he touches it. Just then, the old man enters the room and Leon holds his sword to his neck and asks him if he is a Makai priest and what did he mix in his medicine. The old man explains that the medicine he gave him is called the potion of dreams that erases your memories and hypnotizes you into a dream. Leon presses him for an explanation and the old man confesses that he did it for Agatha. Pepe, who was disguised as Harlequin, strides into the church alongside Agatha, prompting a shocked reaction from the sister who recognizes him. Pepe demands to know the whereabouts of the children, and upon receiving the information from the sister, he heads in their direction. In the room, the old man discloses to Leon that Agatha's mother was his close friend, the priest. After giving birth to Agatha, she remarried a barber a few years after her husband's death. The barber already had a son named Pepe and both Agatha and Pepe quickly became close. However, several years later a rumor about the barber being a werewolf spread and both the barber and his wife were murdered. Pepe runs away from the house after hiding Agatha behind the roof and disappeared. He has been missing since then, but mentions a rumor about a troop of traveling entertainers taking him away. The old man took Agatha in after her parents' tragic deaths. He admits to tricking Leon because he wanted Agatha's dream of her brother returning to come true. As the church bell tolls, signaling the passage of time, the old man informs Leon that Agatha is late. Hearing this, Leon rushes to the church and discovers the sister sitting on the floor. Confronting her, he accuses her of using traveling entertainers to traffic children to slave traders because he has finally figured it out. She tries to deny the allegations, but Leon already knows that the town of Lograja was wiped out by an epidemic, and she was using it as an excuse to sell children. Angrily, he demands to know where they've taken Agatha. After murdering the church leader, Harlequin plays his flute as Agatha and a few children follow behind him. Suddenly, one of the children attempts to flee, triggering Harlequin's transformation into a monstrous horror. With lightning speed, he snatches the child and hurls him into the air. Just then, Leon appears catching him as he falls. Leon confronts Pepe, the Harlequin, telling him that seeking revenge will only bring him suffering. Pepe's memories resurface, recalling the brutal beatings he endured after being sold into slavery until he eventually snapped murdering his oppressor, and turning into a horror. Transforming into Gero, Leon binds Pepe in his horror form with his cloak and stabs it making it disappear. 
With that, Leon attempts to console the frightened children, but they recoil in fear, labeling him as a werewolf before fleeing. Upon his return, Leon encounters his father, who has been informed by Emma about Leon's defeat at the hands of the Dark Knight. His father motivates him to break his limit and become stronger than he is now. With that, he requests money from Leon, explaining that his clothes are gone. Leon tosses a purse of coins at his father's face before walking away in silence. That same night when Leon was attacked, German was sleeping with a woman, who explains how her gift was broken when Leon kicked him out of the room. The woman appears interested in Leon since he is still young, but German dismisses it. Suddenly, a group of soldiers are heard looking for a wounded man. German, puzzled by the disturbance, inquires about it. The woman explains the ongoing witch hunting, expressing her fear of being labeled as a witch one day, due to her profession as an exotic worker. But German brushes her concerns off, thinking that she should instead be arrested for being a pedophile and expressing interest in his underage son. And in the morning, as German walks through the streets, a young, beautiful woman collides with him in a panic, revealing that she's being pursued. Three men emerge behind her demanding that German hand her over, but German sparing no opportunity to act tough in front of a beautiful girl refuses. Intent on punishing German for interfering, the three men advance, but German swiftly rings his bell in their faces. Realizing that they are humans and not horrors, German scoops up the woman and flees. As they escape, German asks the woman's name, learning that she's called Irene. He asks her to keep an eye out for any pursuers, but she reassures him that they aren't being followed. Irene then suggests she knows a safe place where they can hide. They enter an old abandoned house with numerous haystacks and German asks about the people that were pursuing her. Irene reveals that she had encountered them in the past where she struck them in a pub with a wine bottle for harassing her. But unluckily she ends up running on them again earlier, and that's why they are chasing her. After saving her life, Irene insists on expressing her gratitude to German. He asks for a kiss and Irene gives him a peck on the cheek. German immediately regrets thinking that he should have asked for a bigger reward instead. Hearing this, Irene agrees to fulfill any of his wishes. German being the womanizer he is, gets heavily excited and he strips naked. Just then, the door is kicked open, and the three men burst into the room. Irene immediately rushes to their side, clutching German's purse. Realizing he's been robbed, German requests that the men return his belongings, specifically his clothes. However, they refuse, taking out a knife. Before deciding to flee from that place, German tells Irene that he forgives her and knocks over a ladder, and flees from the scene, finding himself exposed and vulnerable as he ventures out into the open, completely naked. Alarmed citizens report him to nearby soldiers, deeming him suspicious. The soldiers, unaware of his true identity, mistake him for Leon, who had vanished the previous night. As the soldiers pursue him, German runs into a woman who is doing laundry. He seizes a cloth to shield his modesty. The soldiers, attempting to aim for German, accidentally target the woman instead. Reacting swiftly, German grabs the arrow they shoot, remarking on their terrible aim. The woman impressed by his skills signals for German to make his escape, and he flees swiftly. Believing he has lost his pursuers, he wanders the streets. However, his respite is short-lived as children approach him, pleading for him to hand over the small weapons he's carrying. Before he can react, the soldiers appear on the scene, mistaking the situation for German holding the children hostage. German immediately takes off running once more, but just as the soldiers close in, Emma suddenly appears beside him. She knocks the guards aside with her string, creating an opportunity for German to escape once again. After they safely escapes on a mountain, Emma lighting a smoke, recounts the events of the previous night, surrounding Leon's encounter with the Black Knight, named Bernando Dion, and how Leon barely escaped with his life. German was surprised to hear the name of Dion, but he remarks that it's fine as long as Leon is alive, and further tells her with this encounter Leon should come to terms with his limitations, which may help him in becoming more stronger in the future. Hearing this, Emma reminds German that Makai Knights are meant to protect rather than solely seek out battles. She warns that if Leon continues to pursue power for the sake of defeating others, he may lose the right to be the Golden Knight. Elsewhere, as the dog of the Watchdog Center feasts on Macarons, German enters and confronts her about why she didn't warn them about Bernando. She calmly explains that she had anticipated Bernando appearance as long as they were pursuing Mendoza. German further questions her if Bernando has turned, to which she confirms his descent into evil. In a flashback, German recalls a moment when he and Bernando were riding horseback, with Anna close behind. He criticizes Anna's horse handling skills, which leads to her tumble. Impressed by her adept recovery, 
He assists her onto his horse as Anna's horse flees. As they continue, German and Bernando engage in friendly combat. German jests about the possibility of a serious match between them in the future, but Bernando dismisses the idea, citing the rule against Mackay knights fighting each other. German remarks on Bernando's seriousness, but Bernando reveals an overwhelming desire to break the rules of Mackay knights sometimes. In the next memory, German and Anna find themselves pursued by soldiers who accuse Anna of witchcraft. The soldiers shoot German's horse, causing both German and a pregnant Anna to fall to the ground. Despite German's objections, Bernando insists that they should flee while he confronts the soldiers, knowing that German is injured and unable to defend themselves. Reluctantly, German and Anna ride off on his horse, as Bernando faces the guards alone. However, unable to fight back due to the Mackay Knight Code, Bernando sustains severe injuries and is captured by the soldiers. Back in the present, German thinks about how he has to brace himself to fight against Bernando. With that, he sneaks back to the house where he was robbed, thinking he would find his clothes. But suddenly he gets attacked from behind by Irene. Recognizing him she rushes toward him, begging for help. German has his doubts of getting betrayed for the second time, but looking at her distressed state he agrees to hear her out. Irene explains that one of the men she was with, Donato, unexpectedly transformed into a monster and attacked everyone present. Just then, Donato appears, transforming into a monster as he attacks German. Reacting swiftly, German leaps into action, using the small knives he's carrying to stab Donato in his vital spot, as Donato vanishes into thin air. After that, German advice Irene that if she continue on her path of deceiving other, she will one day turn into a monster as well. Seeing that German is actually a kind man, she ends up agreeing to spend the night with him. The next day, German finally encounters Leon and requests money for his clothes. Leon thinks about the contrast between the near-death experience he faced and what his dad's been doing, throws the bag of money in his face and walks away. Elsewhere, Raphael trains Prince Alfonso to fight against horrors. They engage in combat despite being knocked down repeatedly by Raphael. Alfonso refuses to stay down, determined to improve. As Raphael delivers a powerful blow, sending Alfonso crashing into a wall, Raphael coughs up blood realizing that he doesn't have time to waste. Therefore, Raphael enters the watchdog center, where he is greeted by the dog, recognizing him as the stronghold knight, Gaia. Raphael immediately requests her to find a brutal horror for him so that he can train his student, Alfonso. The dog offers him the Chimera of Orvian, a terrifying creature known for consuming entire towns and villages wherever it goes. There are even rumors that its body are adorned with the remains of its victims, as if they were decorations for its armor. The dog warns Raphael of the dangers, cautioning that the Chimera is too powerful for a mere training and that Alfonso might not survive. However, Raphael tells that he doesn't have time to waste. As Raphael departs, Leon steps into the watchdog center for the first time, greeted by the dog who introduces herself as Garm. Leon requests her help to provide him with an information against a formidable whore, so that it can use in his training. Though hesitant at first, Garm tells him that she has the perfect one for him. Returning to the training grounds with Alfonso, Raphael is plagued by vivid flashbacks of someone lying in a pool of blood. During supper, he mentions the topic of a horror that haunts the Orvian Highway and tasks Alfonso with defeating it as a final trial of his training. Alfonso interrupts wondering if he is strong enough as he has failed to land even a single blow on Raphael. But Raphael reminds him that they have no time because Mendoza is proceeding with his plan as they speak, and soon he will have the power to fill up the land of Valiant with horrors anytime. Determined to save his kingdom, Alfonso finally agrees to take on the task. Elsewhere, as Leon battles the horrors, he quickly discerns their lack of challenge, prompting him to seek out the formidable chimera horror that Garm had mentioned. The next morning, Alfonso sets out to find the horror and Raphael tells him that once he completes this trial, he will be able to don an armor as a Mackay knight. Later, as Leon navigates the streets of the town near Orvine, he notices a merchant attempting to scam Alfonso by falsely accusing him of breaking an expensive pot. Leon intervenes, pointing out that the pot is nothing more than an ordinary item found anywhere. The merchant tries to demand compensation from him instead, but immediately retreats when he notices Leon's sword. Alfonso thanks Leon for helping him. As Leon tries to leave, he overhears people trying to get Alfonso to stay at their inn. Leon's frustration grows at Alfonso's naivety, and telling him to grow some balls and man the fuck up, he directs him to an inn. They end up eating supper together and they introduce themselves to each other. 
Alfonso lies and tells him that he has the same name as the wanted prince. With that, Leon tells Alfonso that from the next day onwards he won't be sticking with him anymore, and Alfonso assures him that he will be alright. Late at night, Leon slips out intent on finding the horror, and unexpectedly encounters Alfonso. Both Leon and Alfonso disguise their true purpose as they casually stroll towards the horror. At the same time, Raphael awakens abruptly, finding himself on the floor, and is consumed by a haunting flashback. He relives the moment of his son's death amidst the flames, as his son apologizes to him for his inability to inherit the armor of Gael. In the meantime, Leon walking forward urges him to return, but Alfonso tells him that he has a duty that he must fulfill. Suddenly, the Chimera of Orvian appears, its massive body accompanied by two skeletal minions wielding scythes, with human bodies hanging below. As one of the skeletons turns to attack, Leon calls it his prey, telling Alfonso to stay out of his way. But Alfonso insists that he needs to fulfill his duty to become a Machai Knight, so that he can protect his kingdom. Recognizing Alfonso's resolve, Leon advises him to focus on the main body while he takes care of the scythe-wielding minion. Leon leaps forward, slashing at the skeleton's eye, causing its hand to release the scythe, which flies through the air, striking and destroying the second skeleton. Meanwhile, Alfonso dodges and parries the creature's attacks, leaping up to slash at the gate-like structure. The spells dissipate momentarily, but their victory is short-lived, as the ground begins to tremble. Suddenly, the gates swing open, unleashing a spell that engulfs everything in its path with searing purple flames. Emerging from the smoke, they confront a monstrous entity, a massive, gaping mouth horror with rows of teeth. Realizing the imminent danger to nearby villages and towns, Leon, who is shielding himself under a cliff, tells Alfonso to back away. With that, he transforms into the Golden Knight, Garo, which surprises Alfonso. Garo charges forward, but the horror overwhelms him, crushing him with its colossal form. Seeing this, Alfonso leaps into action as well but is repelled by the creature's powerful spells. Alfonso in a moment of doubt wonders if he is really up to the task. However, Raphael suddenly appears on a nearby bridge, telling Alfonso to not give up until his last breath. Transforming into Gaia, Raphael engages the horror, but due to his illness he cannot fight properly and he gets impaled by its spikes. In his final moments, Raphael passes his sword to Alfonso, letting Alfonso inherit his knight. Although he was hesitant wondering if he is ready, Raphael motivates that he truly believed in him that he is ready before getting killed by the horror. Alfonso grasps the sword and transforms into a Makai knight. He launches himself towards the horror, driving the blade deep into its vital spot as he stabs his skull, killing the horror. Just then, Alfonso spots his master amidst a blur of light, where Leon encountered his own grandfather. Raphael reveals to Alfonso the fate of his armor, Gaia, destined to wander without a master after his passing. However, he expresses joy in discovering a successor like Alfonso, and encourages him to surpass him before fading away. As the horror disappears, he kneels beside Leon, tears streaming down his face, vowing to his master that he will defeat all the horrors and protect his people and his country.